Hey everyone, and welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I am Miranda. I'm going to be guiding you through a little Valentine theme creation today. We are going to be starting off with these lovely little flat rocks for painting, and I got mine from Cap Couriers. They are on Amazon. Great company to work with. And they're actually mostly here out of Ohio as well. So check them out. Alrighty. So these are the paints and the tools that we're going to be working with today. So obviously the background here I've painted black. It's just a matte black. And then the other colors here we have fruit punch, peony pink, pink tourmaline, baby pink, and then the snow white, titanium white. And those are all from deco art and they are everywhere they're in Hobby Lobby Michaels you can find them on Amazon they even have their own website they sell from as well so if you are looking for these paints and stones and whatnot I will put all the descriptions for everything I use down below and also in the description I will post the links um, on Amazon where you can find these I just want to mention really quick, this is going to be a kind of different video, not much different than I usually do, but I'm going to do something beforehand. Um, I'll, some of the elements I'll show you a little bit from the side how I do it, and then I'll switch it to this view so that you'll see from the top how I'm placing them. So these are what these stones look like beforehand, and then I just painted a black circle on it. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle because it's art and we're not perfect. <laughs> so, so for each design like I'll start off with the center and I'll show you it from the side and then we'll go from the top view on each one. So I'll look forward to hearing in the comments what you guys think about this kind of new setup. I'm just gonna do a test run of it to see how it goes and to see if you find it helpful. I've had a few people ask me if they could just kind of see from the side um, what I was doing. So, you know, how hard the tool touches, or even if I'm painting with a brush, you can kind of see. Um, I don't do that in this one, but mostly tools in this video. Everything from acrylic rods to the center to our etcher. And then various little dotting tools that I've angled. And then the silicone oval tool which will obviously be for our big peony pink one there. All right, let's get started. All right, from the side now with the half inch rod and the fruit punch paint, you're just gonna dip it and then dot it in the center of your stone. So I'm holding it kind of perpendicular to the stone and then you just a little bit roll it around so you get the edges, so you get that nice circle dot right in the center of your work. Now we're going to grab white and the etcher tool and you can see I'm actually touching the surface each time with the tool. And we're going to make our plus sign so above, below, side to side and then in between each of those white dots we're going to put another one which is essentially just a plus sign in the opposite direction. Okay, now this is the angle spot detailer brush, which I guess I did use a brush in this, I forgot. Just for these ones, because this pink tourmaline, you can see, has that little bit of a stringy effect, and I find it easier with the brush. That way you can kind of swirl it around and it kind of breaks that strand. You can use the dotting tools. This would probably be about the three millimeter size stylus. And then in between each of the white dots, we're going to place that pink tourmaline metallic dot there. So this is the other end of the etcher. We're going to use white and just kind of walk the dots around each of those pink tourmaline dots that we just put down. Starting at the top and just working your way around one side of each of these pink tourmaline dots. And I'm not re-dipping it, I'm just letting the paint run off the tool and you'll get that graduation in size from the larger dots to the smaller ones at the end. 
And again, this is the metal side of the etcher. So these, we're going to go above the dots we just did and just kind of put a larger dot at the top, flip it to the opposite end, and then pull one string down for a swipe of that. Just kind of grab the paint and pull it down and around. So I'm using the gold end to make the dot with the white, and then I'm grabbing it with the metal end and just pulling that swipe right down and around. Makes it a little easier to kind of direct where you would like the paint to go. Just down and around. It's just a fun little creative element. Somebody said they look like musical notes at one point. They are fun. And sometimes I'll have to dip the metal end again just to grab a little bit more paint, especially if we're working small here. Just to make sure I have enough to pull out a tail off of that dot. And then one more over this one. Just like that, Kate Lang. Shout out. So now this is the silicone oval dotting tool and I'm just dipping it perpendicular like you'd hold a pencil for writing and then the same once you set it on the surface it's just like you're holding a pencil. You just press down gently to make sure the paint touches all around and then pull straight up. So we're going to go in between each of these elements that we did here. The paint color that I'm using is peony pink. And I will dip the tool, I think, probably every time, just because the consistency of the paint wouldn't allow for more than one dot at a time with these, so one oval. And I really just pressed it down on the surface, just to kind of spread that paint right out into a perfect little oval. And you can see from the shine, I'm not really waiting for the other rounds to dry because I'm working a little farther out so they won't bleed into one another. But if you're doing closer work, you want to kind of wait for each round to dry a little bit so that the paints don't bleed into one another. Make sure you get it flat on there. And one more here to finish off that element around. Alright, so now I think we'll switch to um, just a normal angled dotting tool. This is the 2 millimeter, And I grabbed some more of that fruit punch that we used in the center. And above each of our little swipe dragged dots here, we're going to put just one dot of that fruit punch with the angled stylus. I let it stay in my palette a little long so I have to just fix it up a bit. Now this is the other end of the silicone dotter so you can see it makes little petal prints. And I have that baby pink there just touching the surface. I'm not moving it around too much. I'm just touching it down to the surface and it makes a perfect little petal. And again, this is the other end of the silicone oval tool that we used for that large oval. This is what the other end looks like. You just barely fit one in there. <laughs> and I'm actually pressing down fully Sometimes rock it back a little bit and you'll get the points of the petals. So this is the baby pink. Now we'll just do a couple more here underneath that large peony oval. So what do you think? These are great, great good Valentine's colors, the pinks and whites. And of course I had to add the metallic. So now we'll take that baby pink again and start at the top of each of the peony oval dots. 
and we're just going to work our way around with the graduated sizes here from large let the paint run off the tool don't dip it again because it'll make it a bigger dot again and we're just going to do this down one side of the large peony oval dot I'm using the baby pink and a small angled stylus I really like just doing the asymmetrical point of view. You get that kind of idea of movement, a little more flowy. And then I'm just letting the paint run off the tool down to that fruit punch dot. And speaking of the fruit punch, why don't we take that and bring it out here and we'll follow along the dots that we just put down with the fruit punch. Oh, see, like I said, I put a little too much, or left it out a little too long in my palette, so it starts to get a little bit tackier, and all you have to do to fix that is just re-pour a little bit more paint, and it'll flow a little nicer, but I'm just gonna fight with it a little bit here just to push on through. So if you're new to my channel and just want to check in and say hi in the comments for me, it helps the algorithm keep these videos going because it makes a connection with us. Even if you don't know what to say, just put a little emoji or a heart or a hand, thumbs up, anything. Just say hi. Let me know where you're from. I have a bunch more videos on here if you're looking for brush videos or other types of tools. This one has actually a pretty good variety <laughs> for a small stone, but... I just want to say too, I just am super psyched to be back with you guys here and excited to be painting again and working on just lots of new new ideas that are floating around my head that I need to get down <laughs> down on canvas so to speak. Sometimes it's a stone, wood, plastic, who knows what the next one will be. Alright, so this is our etcher again with the white, and this I call the swipes. This etcher just makes a perfect swipe on its own. You don't have to do anything, it's literally just a dip, dot, drag it down. And you can see how slow I'm doing it. It's not rushed, a lot of people call them swipes, swooshes, dot drag, comma stroke. Everything kind of sounds quick and they look like they're done fast, but really you're just letting the paint run off the tool just like you would the styluses and walking the dots. It's just that graduated size because the paint is coming off the tool. And this one kind of takes a lot of the challenge out of it. Just take your time touch it to the surface, drag it out. If your tail doesn't go as long as you want it to, you can always flip it to the opposite end as well, the metal end, and just kind of pull the paint out to a point. One more here. On the other side, down and around to that fruit punch. I think to kind of balance this out, we'll do some white dots down the other side, just using the etcher tool. So just a quick maintenance thing too I just want to let you guys know I'm I'm back on Instagram it's a secret though I have a pseudonym a pen name whatever you want to call it <laughs> I'm trying to see because of the debacle over the past couple years and getting blocked and getting shadow banned from followers I'm not really sure how any of that happened but I started a new a new one so don't tell Instagram Come check it out. I'll leave the link in the description here. So 
So we're just working our way around with the white, finishing up a few more dots here along the fruit punch line of dots. And I'm thinking we'll grab the pink tourmaline again here with the etcher. Just scooped it up and I make a big dot at the top. And this is what I'm talking about, about flipping it to the metal end. So you can drag out that tail. It's pointier. You can just kind of etch it along into the space that you need it to go. So we get this nice little teardrop shape here. So just make a big dot at the top. And you can see I'm almost at the edge of the stone. So right at the edge. And then flip the tool to the metal and just pull it down into a teardrop shape. Or for whatever shape you want. That's just what our purpose is today for the teardrop here. Somebody said these look like ice cream cones and now I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> I think it was Sandy. I think it was you, Sandy. Here you go. So we're gonna do this all the way around all these spaces with the pink tourmaline and just pull it into that shape. And if you like it just without all this part, you can leave it at this point. I'm just going to go and finish up filling in this stone, but don't ever feel that pressure to have to fill in a design. I know a lot of people ask, when do you stop? When do you stop adding things to it? So you can stop when you run out of room, or you can leave negative space, which I think a lot of times adds to the beauty of your piece. This one, I don't know why, I just it's telling me to fill it in. So one suggestion as well, I have the screen up so I can see it, but if you take a picture or you walk away from your work and come back and look at it, sometimes that helps you as well, just taking a minute, take a step back, because this is up close in your face. You know, you can see any little detail that didn't go the way you wanted it to, so we're harder on ourselves. Okay, so now I grab the baby pink one last time here, and we're just going to do some little elements here. We'll dot with one end, and then we're going to pull the tail down along the pink tourmaline that we just put in. I don't know what you would call these. I still call them swipes or dot drag, but comma stroke. kind of swipe the tail down along that one. Oh, this is a little divot in my stone here. So there's gesso, there's sealants, there's all sorts of stuff if you really want a smooth surface to work on. You could coat your stone first so that you don't get things like this little divot, but I kind of like the challenge of just working through the natural stone to see where it leads each time and you just kind of work with it to create your design. They kind of look like little antenna. Little butterfly antenna? I don't know. What do you think they look like? You could put that in the comments. So I hope you guys are enjoying being back with me. I have to say it really is a blessing to be back with you all. I love hearing from you all. And a lot of nice comments of encouragement. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping this will be a regular thing again. Especially now in the winter since I'm not out in the garden. The last couple more here. Just kind of pull it down along. I have to just kind of be a little cognizant because the pink tourmaline is still wet, so I don't want to just 
drag it into it. If it's dry, it would be easier to go along, but I just don't want them to bleed into one another. So, especially tucking them in these little spaces here. And looking at the screen, I see I missed just one. There we go. And we'll just tuck it right down in here. Just like that. There we go. We have completed our painting stone for the day. I think it's a great piece for Valentine's. I put magnets on the back of these. I even made some ornaments this year. You could top dot even your large oval if you didn't want that large color block. But there's lots of options here to do. So I hope you guys had fun. I really enjoyed doing this with you all today. And I look forward to hearing your comments about the different design of the video this time. Like I said, with the slow motion side, uh, view so you can kind of see where it's touching the stone. I'd love to hear what you think about that. All right, until next time, my friends, I can't wait to see you all again, so to speak. Have a great day. Happy painting!